Termuri is a software specialized in masonry and uh, building analysis, and uh, it performs a uh, pushover analysis for the global behavior of, of the structure. Um, so, let's start to see what can be done inside uh, Termuri to model uh, existing masonry buildings, and uh, of course, new the, the new one as a special category of of the existing. So we can start with a short presentation. In Tutermuri, is it possible to model uh, a lot of different kinds of structures? The main uh, resistance structures must be mesory, but you can also model and verify from a seismic point of view reinforced concrete frames with steel and columns, reinforced concrete uh, walls. Um, steel, uh, steel frames, steel uh, beams and columns, and also wood columns and beams. Uh, the structure can be reinforced uh, with, uh, for example, FRP, steel frames, uh, reinforced masonry, and uh, all the kind of reinforcement actually uh, distributed and uh, developed by the producers. Uh, inside Ramuri, you have uh, mainly this kind of uh, structures. So uh, these are the objects that can be modeled inside Ramuri. So a single panel, a panel obviously with, with an opening, the three different kinds uh, of, uh, of columns, also including uh, the uh, mesory columns, and the uh, combined panel. So mesory panel with a with, uh, concrete beam, wood beam, uh, a tie rod, or a steel beam with uh, so with a balcony, so you can perform all these kind of uh, modeling. But what is more interesting is the, the the reinforcement. So it can be done mixing various materials, adding a new part of, of mesonry, adding a new reinforced reinforced concrete part, or adding steel frames. Then it can, can also be performed a reinforced memory mesonry world, a reinforced mesonry world with FRP. Or a mix of all these kind of reinforcement. What is very important into the analysis of uh, Tremuri is uh, the modeling of the floors, because uh, we, especially in um, existing building, floors uh, uh, are not rigid, because maybe you have uh, timber floors or you have vaults. So modeling them as a um, rigid one uh, can uh, have. Um, can change the behavior of the structure because the distribution of the seismic forces it will be very different, as you can see in, in these images. So a rigid floor will distribute in a, in the same in same part the the forces between all the walls. Instead, the, uh, a flexible floor, a not rigid one, let me let me say, can distribute the forces in a in a very different in a very different way depending on the direction of stiffness on the main direction of the stiffness of the floors and of the uh, how stiff is uh, the floor itself. So in Tutermuri it's possible to model obviously the rigid one but you can model the floors with uh, their uh, own flexibility uh, because we you have uh, uh, the possibility to perform this uh, kind of reloaded uh, floors in which you will uh, be asked to insert the uh, geometry uh, and the load of, uh, loads, of course, and uh, there is also the possibility to uh, model directly your own uh, the characteristic of the uh, membrane that you want to calculate inside the software. But we will see how to do it into the software in in a, in a few minutes. Uh, same things for for vaults. These are the, the preloaded uh, vault in which it is only be asked to insert uh, the uh, the geometry, the material. Uh, and the, the self weight of the uh, above part of, 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 the, of the walls. Inside Tremuri, uh, it's very important uh, to model the real behavior of the structure. So it's not so important to make a picture of the structure, but to make a model that behaves like the structure is in the reality. This is the reason why, uh, as uh, Tremuri is a specialized software for measuring structures. Uh, it behaves uh, uh, a mesh by macro elements. 
And these are the macro elements. So there are peers, spandrel, and rigid denote. We are referring now only to a measuring uh, panel. So the the, spend, the peers are the horizontal part of the measuring between two openings. The spandrel is this the vertical part of the measuring between two openings in vertical direction, and the rigid node is all the rest of the, uh, of the panel. Uh, this kind of modeling is uh, the, the best way to uh, uh, model a measure panel uh, in, in order to uh, understand where there are the, uh, the cracking the, and the failure of, of the, the measure. Because uh, from uh, um, uh, scientific test and also on a, on a vibrant table and uh, uh, looking at the results of an earthquake or of a near of a year earthquake, uh, it's uh, you can see that uh, the cracking are uh, condensed into measuring and peers, uh, spandrels and peers. Uh, so analyzing very well this part, it's the best way to understand the, the real behavior of the structure. So the structure is made with the, an equivalent frame. You can see in this part, so the, the red lines are uh, spandrels and, uh, and peers, and we just know that they are the, the black part in, uh, in this picture. Um, in Dr. Muri has performed a pushover analysis. So, uh, this is how uh, a non linear static analysis, as we say, pushover analysis, is performed. So, uh, we start from uh, an undamaged. Uh, building, we apply the uh, seismic action to, to the structure, and then we uh, are uh, doing um, uh, an analysis in uh, displacement control. So on every uh, calculation steps, uh, we um, apply a, a force to the control node that make a displacement of the control node. Uh, control displacement of the, of the control node and this force is then is applied to all the rest of the structure and the, the uh, um, global the displacement of the uh, of the structure is calculated then we can uh, in this way we can calculate the base shear and the displacement and we can uh, have uh, our pushover analysis so in at the end of the pushover we will always have some uh, failures because we uh, push the, the structure till the, the failure of it uh, into the euro code it says that we have a, we need a drop of the 20% of the base shear to end the analysis uh, but we also uh, at the end we compare the displacement that our structure has with the displacement required by the code in the, the place where the, the, the structure is built so we can have an idea of all the uh, failure that can happen in, uh, in the structure when they can happen. So if it is before or, or after the displacement required by the by the euro codes, and then we can apply, if needed, the reinforcement and the improvement of the structure that are needed. But today we are also uh, for we also be focused on uh, um, uh, the local behavior of the structure. So uh, what we have seen here it's the global behavior of the structure. Uh, that uh, to be performed needs that the structure is well connected in the, uh, in the intersection of the mesa or, or the walls uh, that has floors, obviously, uh, but not always in the, the uh, um, existing building. We can be sure that these conditions uh, are um, satisfied. So, uh, what can happen uh, in, a, in a real structure, a real existing structure? That uh, there are the, the first mechanism of, uh, of failure are the mechanism of first work. So uh, it's uh, the out of plane behavior of the structure. In case we don't uh, have uh, the uh, connection uh, between uh, floors and walls, and, and walls, or we don't have connection between uh, between walls, or in sometimes maybe we also can have uh, the uh, an, too heavy floors. That uh, creates an out of plane behavior in the structure. We can see some example of this. This is uh, an example for the local mechanism of an 
the auto plane of uh, a, a floor. So uh, maybe a two-way floor not well connected to, to to the walls, and then can create this kind of auto plane behavior. Uh, in this case, uh, maybe there is a, a problem with with uh, with mortar, and this is how it can behaves in a, inside a, a single a single plane. Uh, in the real structures, it's very common to see this kind of failures, and then we will see how they can be modeled inside Tremoy, all these kind of uh, failures. Um, you can see here uh, the, uh, the effects on, on the structures of the first mode um, out of plane behavior. So, so these floors create this kind of damage into into the structure. So it means that this floor is well connected to the structure. At this base, the, the structure is well connected, not in the middle. And so the, the horizontal movement of the floors create this kind of uh, damages. Uh, also in this case, uh, the walls is, has been detached from the, from the roof and they create this kind of damages. This is not a global behavior of the structure, but it's a, a local behavior. Uh, another typical example is this one, when uh, the roof uh, is, has forces into the outer plane that are not um, put in, in equilibrium with, for example, uh, a tie rod in this place or in this other, or uh, with a beam all around uh, the, the, the roof. And then it can create this kind of uh, local mechanism that can be seen in a, in a real structure here. Uh, to better understand where it is possible to, uh, uh, it is better to in insert the uh, reinforcement, in Chotter Moore it's also possible to run. Uh, uh, in the, the sensitivity analysis that is a, a sequence of pushover analysis uh, in which uh, our uh, parameter or some parameter are been uh, automatically changed by the software, obviously set by the user, and uh, in uh, this way you can uh, see where there uh, could be more useful to uh, insert uh, reinforcement or to uh, run uh, some analysis on the material. So we have had a look, a uh, short look of uh, what Tremuri can uh, can do, uh, but I think uh, that it could be better to uh, start the software and see it in uh, in action. So this is uh, Tremuri. Uh, as you can see, Tremuri is uh, divided into four different uh, uh, tabs. Uh, don't look at this; it's for internal use, as you can see <laughs> from the name. Um, what we can uh, do first is uh, to run a new, uh, a new project, so we can insert uh, uh, a name. Okay. And then Tremuri starts uh, asking you what, uh, what, you, what is the, the code that you want to apply to your uh, model. Uh, these are all the code available inside Tremuri. Uh, let's start with the Eurocodes. Inside the Eurocodes, you can have the possibilities to um, personalize the parameters uh, in order to be aligned to uh, a, maybe a national annex that in some kinds of these uh, values can be a little bit different from the uh, Eurocode itself. Uh, so uh, all these parameters are the default when you, uh, uh, for example, uh, define a material, uh, or when uh, you are calculating a pushover analysis. In this case, there is the decay of the 20% of the that I mentioned before, uh, but you can also uh, Activate the limit for the Q star. So it's not required for, for the Euro code, but it's some national access required. For example, in Italy, it's required also this, uh, this limit. Um, 
all these parameters uh, can be also changed. Uh, for example, in the materials, uh, you can create these are this is the default, but when you create uh, uh, your material, you can change it for a single material. For example, if you have drift different because you may be reinserting a, a new material that has different uh, uh, parameters, you can change it there. Uh, there is also the possibility to insert the spectrum or, or the eyes, also in this case personalized. And we can click in OK, we accept the, the Euro codes. Uh, the personalization, uh, I forgot, can be saved here, so you can have your own uh, personalization. You, know, you recall it on uh, uh, every time you, you use the one. Uh, this is a, an existing building or a new one, it's important for the material definition. Then we can click OK. Now we have a, a white paper and we can start uh, inserting a DXF. Uh, what we need uh, as DXF uh, is uh, a plant with the, the axis uh, of, of the walls uh, uh, and uh, uh, the positioning uh, of, the, of, the, uh, of the openings. So it's a very easy uh, building. But uh, to understand how, to, how Termui is, uh, can be used, it, I think it's more than enough. What the first thing that we have to do is to uh, commute the axes that are the drawn in, uh, into the plan into a possible structural axis that can be defined inside the software. So we have to insert the alignment that can become. Uh, a, stru a structural alignment inside inside the software. So it's very easy to insert them because we only have to go through the axis that we have already drawn. And so in this way, we have created the basis uh, of, the, uh, of our model uh, on which we can uh, uh, design all the structural uh, objects uh, that are of the structure. Uh, we have these other uh, commands here that uh, are useful when we have to change something inside the, the model. Uh, it's uh, like cut, cut uh, commands for uh, extend, trim, uh, align walls, uh, fillet. So it's, it's, it's just like a cut part of the software. Uh, we can also insert things with this command that allows you to have the chords of every point and to insert uh, lines uh, with uh, the land and the angle or the inserting two points, uh, the coordinates of two points. Uh, now, at the moment, we only have uh, this plan. We, don't, we haven't inserted anything else, but we can start modeling our structure and going through the second tab that is the, the, stru the structure one. The first, the first icon is related to the materials. Uh, inside Remuri, there are these preloaded materials. Inside Mesori, you can uh, have, you have uh, an example materials uh, because to uh, insert the, the Mesori in part of the one, you can go through this uh, parameter. So you insert the mortar uh, and all the uh, parameters asked from from the Euro codes, and uh, it's the same if you if you go for a, a new one, okay? Then you can uh, select the constitutive law of the model uh, or the material, and the, uh, all the parameters in this uh, part are the calculation parameters one. Um, the material can also be preloaded uh, by uh, um, a library, so we can have libraries for, for Euro codes. Uh, we can, or we can have also a library for other other codes, or at the end a user library. So if there are some material that are more common in your region, you can uh, load it once, and then you can recall it from your uh, own library. Uh, the same thing can be done for concrete. These are some concrete preloaded, uh, bars, structural steel, uh, and wood. There are some uh, uh, material preloaded, but you can create your own as, as, as you want. Uh, then we can go through the definition of structural elements. So if we select uh, this command, then I can 
select all the lines, right click, and these are all the elements that I show you before in the presentation. So, Mesuri panel, Mesuri with a uh, uh, reinforced concrete beam in which all the uh, geometry is needed, the bars, uh, the transition, the dimensions, uh, as Mesuri with uh, a wood or steel uh, beam. In case of steel, uh, we have uh, the libraries of profiles preloaded. Mesuri with a tie rod. So it's very common in uh, measuring structures. Uh, reinforced concrete wall, in which also, as for the beams, it's required to insert uh, the bars and the, the positioning. Single beam, single tie rod. You know, definition that is important with uh, this alignment in the level we are managing is not, it's not defined. So we can go through this kind of definition. Here we have defined the, the, the material, and so now we have started to uh, modeling our structure. We can see it in uh, the 3D view. Sorry, it's on the other screen. So we have defined all the, the mesory uh, walls. Uh, now we can insert openings. Uh, you can see here the dimension of the openings. Uh, uh, Insert them by clicking. Uh, okay, so I click this one. Okay, no, it's not needed. With a click with with the snaps. Okay. Now we can insert some doors. We can also insert them by two points, so like this, if we don't know the, the dimension previously. Okay, this is what we have done. So, our structure is mainly done. Then, we have to go through this. This is the command for the columns. So, there are the possibilities for reinforced concrete columns, mesory, and steel. Your wood. You can go through the uh, floors. So, as I told you before, you, you can uh, select one of these uh, kind of floors or a user defined. Uh, now we can insert directly this kind of floor, then we can see the differences between all, all the floors. Then you select the main direction. These are the, the loads. Applied on the floor, the support length. So it's how much the floor is connected to uh, to the walls. Let me insert 15 after the walls. The uh, dimension of the walls or the, on the floor. And here you can go through the various kind of uh, of floors that can be inserted. It's uh, asked to insert the uh, the geometry, and in this part is automatically calculated uh, the uh, orthotype horizontal membrane that will be modeled and mesh during the calculation. Um, we can, for example, insert this this one. So the, this dimension, the interaxis. So in this way, in this part, are calculated the uh, parameter of the orthotropic membrane that do will have this kind of stiffness, and this uh, parameter are used during the calculation of the software. Are reported here. Then clicking OK, we have inserted uh, our our floor. We can add another one here. Okay. Uh, I, yes, of course. I haven't inserted it yet. Uh, 
Okay. So now we have our model with walls, openings, and floors. Then we can go through uh, the uh, level management, and we have the option to uh, go up with a, with a second level, duplicating this one. So, so all the things that we have modeling it will be uh, modeled uh, at once in the second level. Or we can create a new empty empty level. We can go through the duplication, so we can see how fast is modeling size remotely. So we have created a, a new level. So we can go through the second one. Maybe replacing this part. We can divide, insert a dividing point. And then we can go through this and we have modified our model very quickly, creating maybe a balcony in this area. So the other commands similar to the one we have seen is the command with the, with the vaults. Uh, so in this case, uh, you have to def you have also in this case the possibility to define the, the geometry of the various kind of vaults. This search, the insertion is exactly the same as for the uh, for the floors. Balcony is just like uh, the insertion of an opening, but we also have to insert obviously the loads of the balcony. The commands are exactly the same. This is the possibility to insert directly concentrated or linear uh, loads over a floor, over a, a wall, or in a specific point. But we can go through the, the last uh, modeling part, that is uh, the roof part. So it's similar to the other part, but in this uh, in this part, you we have a mix of the alignment and the structure. A mix because we can uh, design alignment that uh, are modeled only in, uh, in the roof. For example, uh, the beam at the top of the roof. And uh, we, in this kind of in this part, uh, we uh, have the possibility to uh, as, uh, assign quotes to the uh, to the nodes. Instead of the uh, uh, the structural part in which the the quotes are defined here in the level management, so we can start assign a quote to this to this part. Then we can insert this, and then we can manage these walls. As a masonry wall, this part is not needed because we don't have anything on the lower level, so we make it as no definition. Since this part is also is already defined in the second level, we will add this kind of we have this option to define this the, the perimeter in order to. Uh, have the uh, the roof that uh, can distribute its loads over this uh, this part that is defined in the, in the lower level. Then at the end, we can insert our wood beam. Last common is uh, the floor type that is exactly the same uh, of the floor in the in the lower level. So we can insert it here. So at the end we have this kind of model. Okay. So we have very quickly produced a, a model of an existing building. And then we can uh, go to the, uh, the analysis. So global analysis, the pushover analysis, by clicking on uh, this tab. The first thing is that we ask to save the model. And then the meshing will be start. The meshing in Tremuri is uh, totally automatically, and uh, it, it cover. I, let me say the 95% of uh, the common 
uh, models but if uh, there are some uh, particular parts that uh, needs more detailing uh, a manual modification of the mesh is available so you can uh, modify inserting deleting uh, objects uh, inside the uh, the mesh so we can uh, see a uh, a wall meshed we can uh, recognize uh mesh repair spandrels the tie rod that we have uh, inserted uh, as you can see here there isn't uh, uh, the mesh or of the, of the roof because here in the level management we have defined the roof as non-structural so in this case the roof will be modeled as a load and the, these loads will be distributed over the uh, over the structure instead if uh, we model it as a structural uh, also the part of the roof will be meshed and uh, will be verified inside the, uh, the, the pushover analysis uh, we can go through a rapid uh, pushover analysis of this part to see the, the results. Uh, we have made the, 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 the mesh of the walls. Now starting uh, the pushover, we are going to in, uh, do also the mesh of, of floors and, uh, and slabs. Uh, <coughs> this mesh is also useful for uh, the, uh, the other part, that is the part related to the, to the local mechanism. Uh, the mesh it's uh, the same in the two these two parts uh, but when we uh, we will see that when we create uh, a rigid block for a local mechanism uh, the software will uh, also create a special uh, mesh of, the, of this part calculating automatically the center of the masses of uh, the uh, of the blocks that we are going to create so uh, the floor mesh is done uh, now we have this uh, table in which is uh, possible to select the analysis that you would like to perform. 24 analyses are the one required by the, the code. So there is the combination of the direction x, the versus, uh, plus or minus, x and y, plus and minus, and the two different uh, kind of uh, distribution of the loads. The one is that is that uniform, that is a rectangular one in a vertical direction. And uh, this one is uh, a distribution that is uh, in a triangular inverse, uh, when, uh, so starting from uh, uh, the bottom to the top, it's a triangular distribution. Here we can uh, select uh, the control node, that uh, is uh, the uh, node in which uh, it will be calculated the displacement on every step of the calculation. So the displacement is calculated here by the maximum displacing divided the sub-steps. So this node, this node, on uh, on every step will be uh, will have a displacement uh, that is calculated in this way, and the force uh, needed to move this uh, node uh, of this, uh, of this, this, this with this displacement will be applied to all the rest of the structures. Uh, then uh, the global displacement is calculated, but it is calculated in this way. So we have a, a well, let me say a second control node that is a virtual one that uh, is made by the average displacement of all the nodes uh, of the second level uh, where we have selected this one. In this way, we can um, answer to the request of the Euro codes to have uh, a um, perform the displacement of uh, the center of the masses of the structure because if we made if we think to a structure with the rigid floors and we calculate on every step the displacement of all the uh, nodes and uh, we weight the display this displacement with the masses applied on uh, every nodes we are calculating the displacement of the center of the masses in this case, uh, the center of the mass maybe it's here, so it's almost impossible uh, to uh, select the, uh, the a control node in the center of the structure. But in this way, we can recreate this displacement with the displacement of this virtual control node that is used to uh, compare the performance of the building to the performance required by the by the codes. In, uh, the place that uh, the software is uh, that the building is built so we can select this for example to uh, 
analysis and then we can click in OK, just click restart, maybe the spectrum is not defined, obviously. So, uh, okay, we can insert, for example, like this very quickly. So, uh, I forgot to show you that it's also possible to uh, insert uh, um, personalized uh, uh, spectrum so you can insert directly the spectrum by points and you can create uh, your own uh, spectrum into the, uh, the analysis. Uh, the insertion of the spectrum can be done uh, easily by uh, copy and paste from an Excel files but I can show you now at the end of the saving because it's parametric but it's also personalized and in this way you can insert how many points as you want and you can recreate your own spectrum so you can also do a paste from a, um, an excel and then it can create as you want uh, let's go through the results so uh, okay so these are the, these are the results. So it, this is our show record, and uh, you can go through the various walls to see what are the, uh, the failure in, uh, in, uh, in your structures. Looking at uh, the colors, so we have a legend here for the colors, and these two measure here are fed for uh, for shear. These other ones are only damaged when are in the plastic range of the of the material. And this is the pushover curve, the request of the, of the code for this place, and the displacement uh, offered by, by, the, by the building. Uh, we can go through also this kind of uh, visualization to look at all the damages, but we can also have this kind of uh, live uh, performing of the uh, Damages during the calculation, so you can see what happens into the structure. The pushover can uh, can be saved uh, as an image. Uh, you also have the possibility to look at all the numbers uh, with in terms of displacement and shear of every step of calculation. And uh, here we have the details of what has been performed the analysis parameters of the equivalent uh, single degree, degrees of freedom uh, model and then for the uh, details for the near collapse uh, server damage on the liquid stain damage with uh, the uh, pgh of, of the various limit state um, on each uh, uh, window you can always uh, recall the, the code or the uh, the app so um, we can see also it in uh, in a 3D view. Uh, it's in, this is not important for small structures, but then the, when you have big structures to understand where are the uh, the failure concentrated, maybe it could be useful. So we have seen how to perform a global analysis, but uh, not. It's not always so uh, lucky to have a um, masonry building uh, with a panel with a, with a tie rod, but yeah, so we can uh, maybe sometimes we can have to go through the local mechanism. In local mechanism, we can uh, analyze all the uh, auto plane behaviors of a rigid body. So, uh, what we have here is uh, the view of, uh, of, of the walls, so the prospect of the walls. As you can see here, even if the, uh, the roof is not structural in our definition, it will be it, 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 it's also possible to perform local mechanism for this part, because it's very common that you can have a, a timber floor in, uh, in the roof, that is not connected to the rest of the structure, and then performing the outer plane behavior of this part of, uh, of the structure is very common. So we can start having a look at 
this kind of uh, autoplane uh, mechanism. Uh, what we have to the perform first is to assign a name to the mechanism. So, so let's say B4 1. The mechanism now is active. We can we are performing on the, the P4. These are the global axis. The X1 is parallel to the axis of the wall. The Y1 is the one that is going outside. And the Z1 is this one you can see here. So it's always possible to understand where we are. Uh, the first thing is to define uh, the block, so the rigid body that will uh, perform the auto plane behavior. Uh, this kind of the design is uh, totally free, so the only thing that uh, you have to uh, look at is that uh, you need an horizontal base to insert the hinges. Uh, this is the for delete blocks. Then you can insert hinges, so the um, the constraint of this uh, of this block in this case is very easy because we have an inch set base and then uh, there are uh, the, uh, the possible loads that are applied to the blocks uh, automatically uh, the software calculates uh, the uh, the loads of all the floors that are in, in, inside the this, this area but this is also useful uh, a, co a useful command to uh, insert, for example, uh, the effect of a new beam that can be modeled in, uh, in, uh, in, in our building, or, for example, uh, of, uh, of the tie rod that we already have in our, in our, uh, in our building. Now we can uh, run uh, the analysis without inserting any, any loads, and then we can see uh, the difference. Uh, this is the direction of the the seismic action that is correct because it's on the, the auto plane. We can move the this part so we can see the, the block. This is the line section, and then we can run the calculation. It's a port constraint because we are not at the, uh, on the land. Uh, if it's if if you want, you can run also for damage limit state verification. I will it's not supplied by uh, the uh, by the code. And uh, the uh, retraction of, of the hinges because some, uh, this, this will not be exactly a rigid point on which, but during the, the rotation, it will move a little bit uh, on the inside. Uh, we can also perform the uh, uh, the reduction by the uh, um, safety factor. Uh, I haven't selected. So here we can see that uh, if we were on the load, it would be satisfied. But we are on the quote, so the our um, um, auto plane behavior is not satisfied, and uh, we have uh, an index as of 0 to 38. These are the the quote for DLS. So we can uh, start uh, thinking about something to that can be improved into the this model, maybe we can add uh, two beams in this area to connect to the top of the uh, of the roof, and uh, we can insert uh, uh, a concentrated load at the top to uh, perform what is uh, the uh, the forces that this uh, wall, uh, this this beam, sorry. Uh, can apply to our uh, to our block. So we have a force that will be the, in the direction y uh, positive. Uh, sorry, this is the, the position. It's okay. It's the force. So we are exactly in this position of the node number two. Uh, it's not a mess, so it can be. It, we have, uh, for example, to add loads uh, like a. Uh, 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 passive mass on the on, on the rigid body we can we can add it uh, in this case we have a positive y so we can insert a force like this and then we can uh, run again the, the calculation that I, I hope in this in this case so we we move from uh, 0 38 to 0 59 so we have improved the performance it's not verified but we are going in the in the, in the right direction maybe uh, 
to force IV insert is not too much. Uh, what you have to look for is the uh, for the minimum forces that can be uh, uh, that must be applied to the uh, mechanism to be verified, and then you can go uh, through your uh, connection and uh, see if uh, this this force can be. Uh, Carried by your uh, your connection and your beam that you have inserted into the into the model. Uh, here we have the uh, see how the how the plane performs, and we can see also it in the uh, 3D view. So uh, sorry, it's on the other side. How it it performs. Uh, we can go through another mechanism. So we can uh, stay in the, the P4, number two. We have to activate this mechanism. Okay. And then we can go for a mechanism for in this, in this area. Like this. Not like this. In this kind of me mechanism, the software will automatically calculate uh, the center of the mass of, of the two uh, rigid blocks we have designed. Uh, so it's not important to go through the, uh, the openings. Uh, you can uh, design the, the perimeter. Uh, and this uh, kind of structure is now, this is a, a fractal line that we have inserted into the software, so into the model. Uh, so it's not connected anymore to all the rest of, of the starter. So the uh, tie rod that we have here in the in our uh, main model, in the global model, will not be taken into account. So if we would, if we, we would like to uh, take them into account, we can insert them as a as a load. But first of all, we have to insert the hinges. Otherwise, it doesn't work. So the the base one, the internal one, and the external support at the top. To allow the, the the behavior of this kind of movement, so this floor will have this kind of movement. Uh, we can go through the calculation of this uh, mechanism. In this case, it's a load constraint, and it's verified. It's very well verified in this case because we have. A a load constraint, uh, so the, the tie rod in this case are not are not needed. But uh, in, if in another case we are we will have to insert them, we can uh, use this uh, this command and go to selecting a node, and uh, we can insert the uh, parameter of, of the tie rod. So uh, the plus stress value, the rotation. Maybe we can uh, we don't have exactly a <coughs> wall uh, that are. <coughs> Exactly squared, so <coughs> maybe if we we, uh, if we are going to make a mechanism on uh, this wall, and we would like to have exactly this direction of, of the tire. We can insert here the rotation angles on into into the plan, <coughs> so the horizontal and to the vertical. If, for example, we have a tire that is put in this direction, uh, then there is the, the the, the positioning in uh, Z and X direction on on the wall re re related to the node we have selected. So it's very similar to the concentrated node we have inserted before, but with uh, <coughs> some dedicated uh, dedicated commands. So uh, let's in insert it here, for example, um, the spread stress just to indicate uh, the uh, okay. This is okay. So. Because in this way we can, okay, as you can see here, now the tie rod in this direction is not useful for us. And this is the reason why we have the possibility to insert an horizontal uh, angle to rotate it uh, into this other way. Um, now I don't remember exactly the angle. I can. Have a look at it here. Just a minute, so I can. Okay. 
so it's 73 okay We can have this angle. Okay. And now we have the tie rod exactly in the direction of, uh, of our wall. Right. Now I can perform the, uh, the analysis. Obviously, it will be more and more verified. But this is uh, useful for me to uh, uh, let you see this kind of uh, command, that is the, the verification. Uh, or the tie rod that we have inserted into the local mechanism so it's uh, possible to go for a project so uh, we have inserted the first stress but uh, the uh, the link of the tie rod can be uh, analyzed and uh, calculated by this automatic uh, mm, uh, tools so we can uh, insert uh, uh, directly the uh, the diameter if uh, if the diameter is uh, already known and then we can lock it or uh, we can uh, ins uh, and let the, uh, the software calculate uh, the uh, the rest of the parameters so this is the minimum base needed or obviously it's a very very little because it's uh, very little also the first stress uh, in this case is, uh, the tire the tire is not needed but it's something that can be calculated automatically, and uh, you can calculate it also uh, all the tie rod inserted in all the uh, local mechanism at once. So, if we have maybe five or uh, ten local mechanism with uh, maybe thirty tie rod inserted, uh, you can calculate it all at once with the tools. Okay, so uh, we can go through another. Mechanism that is this let me get this one so we can put it here. Okay, let me say we can call it corner activate. Okay, so we can go here for example, and this is this kind of mechanism so. Because we can insert also the mechanism for with different parts, and more than uh, one wall can be involved in, uh, in the local mechanism calculation. So we can go here. Now we can insert the uh, hinges. So it's on the left part, uh, and we are going to insert it. Okay, it could be like this. Okay, obviously, I put it in, in the wrong way. <laughs> okay, so this is the behavior how it could uh, behave, and then we can calculate it. Again. Okay. Also, in this case, it's very it's verificated because we have a good uh, structure. But for example, uh, the loads can be inserted also in, uh, to uh, if we have a uh, a part of the of the structure that is uh, uh, involving our uh, our rigid body in the out of plane behavior. So we can insert it also. Maybe we have um, uh, in this part uh, we can have a concentrated load that is pushing it in the in the outer plane. Uh, it's not our case, but if we have a floor, a roof here that is pushing out of plane this part, we could have this kind of behavior. So we can have it maybe around in this way and around in this other. Okay, and then we can go for the calculation. Uh, okay, so let's put it plus 500. Okay, this is more correct. 
and so it's all it's still verified but uh, uh, now it's we are, we have a uh, an index of vulnerability that is lower obviously so the loads can be inserted not all not only to verify the, the model but also to understand if there are uh, um, loads inside the, the the model that can create the out of frame here uh, let, let's go through uh, another uh, kind of uh, reinforcement. Uh, 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 the other reinforcement that can be performed in, uh, into the uh, into Tremuri. So uh, here we can uh, have a look, have a sh very short look of the, the reinforcement that can be applied directly on, uh, on walls. So reinforced memory, in which it will be asked to insert uh, the uh, bars that are inserted inside the, the mesory if they are localized at the end of the panel or the widespread on the whole panel uh, very similar is the reinforcement of a, a single panel uh, that can be applied outside the, uh, the mesory in this case you always you also have the possibility to insert the, the angle of the horizontal uh, part of the bars and then the FRP that uh, can be applied. So uh, you have uh, libraries of preloaded uh, materials. So these are two examples, but you can also create your own library. Uh, and you can insert them directly in this way. And so the calc it's uh, automatically calculated uh, the, the values uh, or the reinforcement that can be applied to, to the measure. So, these are the most common values that are normally uh, uh, you can find into the catalog of the producer of, this, of, the, of the FRP. Uh, but uh, something that is very uh, used, I, I, as, uh, let me say, also in the northern part of Europe, uh, is the possibility to insert uh, uh, stiffening frames. So we can uh, insert uh, uh, directly on the walls uh, um, a stiffening frame in steel. So uh, this can be done on the walls with the command I show you now, or uh, the or on the uh, on the on the floors. So uh, in both cases uh, we have this uh, new uh, window in uh, which, like uh, let me say, in the roof there is a mix of the uh, alignment and structure tabs so you can insert uh, lines to define the uh, alignment on which uh, the reinforcement can be uh, inserted uh, if you can say something like this or maybe more common or something like this if it's not our case but if we have uh, for example a timber uh, floor uh, we can uh, reinforce it uh, with these uh, diagonals that can be modeled for example in like tie rods so we can insert beams tie rods so, tie rods here so we have maybe uh, improved the performance of uh, our uh, of our floor, uh, you can see it also here. And if you run a, a mesh uh, of the model, also this uh, result will be deleted. Um, also, this uh, tie rods will be meshed and will uh, participate to the calculation of the of the global analysis. So now we can see it, and then we can see how to model it uh, on uh, a single wall. So the mesh is done. And then we have also this tie rod that has been modeled and then uh, will take part on, on the calculation. So you can see them here in, uh, in the mesh. OK, 
Okay, so I can uh, open uh, another model in which I can show you how to model it, how to model the reinforcement on uh, on a single wall. The model is very similar to this one, but in this case, I have a big set that can be loaded on a wall. Uh, some of you can recognize it, this model that is the demo one inside Tomori, a little bit modified because in this case we have two two levels uh, and uh, the roof divided into different levels. So when we uh, open it, the prospect of this uh, wall, we can uh, go to the definition of the uh, element uh, or the reinforcements as I've done before for the, the, the roof, but we can also insert the XF and so we can go uh, remodeling it uh, as we have done in, uh, when we have uh, opened the Termuri and starting our, our modeling. The only limit of, of this modeling is that uh, obviously the uh, all uh, the reinforcement must be must be uh, connected to the floor level. So uh, we can perform this uh, also the uh, um, connection in this part um, of the wall of the wall, but uh, the rest of, of the uh, or the reinforcement is connected or at the base or at a level or of a mesury, otherwise it doesn't have effect on uh, on our uh, calculation. So here we can insert the tie rod as we have done before. And in this case, uh, these other parts can be uh, instead, some so let me let me check one just to convert it. It's not so important. So um, then we can the define uh, if the uh, the reinforcement is uh, on, on which side of the of the wall it's, it is made, it is put. So with the, the reinforcement eccentricity, so you can move it uh, positive of, or in outside or inside the, the wall. Uh, you can see the the axis here. So this is the positive direction. So if you want to put it outside, we have to insert a minus uh, displacement. This uh, yellow area is the area in which I have defined the, the reinforcement. So we can go back here. And also in this case, uh, all uh, the tie rods and beam that we have defined here will be uh, meshed and modeled uh, with, uh, with a global analysis. Uh, uh, and so you, we, we will see also this element in the, in the mesh. Uh, the same things can can be done also in uh, in this other part. But let's have a look at uh, the global mesh. Okay. So as you can see here, we have the tie rods and the beams that I have inserted before. So, as in the case of the of the floors, also here you can uh, model the your uh, your reinforcement. This is very useful uh, when uh, it's you have a, 
uh, chapters that are uh, already damaged or uh, if you have a very poor mortar or very poor masonry material so you can insert a sort of steel frames that can uh, in some part also uh, substitute in part the, the masonry uh, masonry walls masonry walls will must be maintained by, uh, because oh, they uh, maybe they have a they can carry vertical loads, but uh, on a seismic, from a seismic point of view, they must be aided uh, but, uh, by, by, the, uh, by the steel frames. Uh, also, in this other part, we can model the, the, other, uh, you know, the other possibility uh, to model the other part, but we can go also uh, to the roof and see what can be done in uh, in the roof so uh, we can uh, substitute uh, uh, let this maybe this uh, uh, quotes so instead of 500 we can insert 550 so we can elevate it and then Panel. No. Now in the 3D view we are in this option, so I have elevated a little bit uh, the roof. Then we let me say we don't maybe we don't have a, um, a wall in these two parts, but uh, we can have a, a wood beam. And we can insert a stiffening frames into this part. So, sorry, I close it instead of enlarge it. So, a uh, kind of stiffening frames can be this one, or we can. And then we can define this, this one. So if we have a look at it in a 3D view, this is what we have modeled. It's another way to use the uh, the reinforcement. This is not steel; it's wood, but I think it's very common in uh, in, in the roof to, to have uh, this kind uh, of opportunity to, to model it. And so, in in this way, we, it's also a way to reinforce uh, the roof and the stiffness of the roof, or to model it as it is in uh, in, the, in, the, in the real structure. Okay. If this part is inside a structural roof, it will be modeled and calculated with all the rest of the, of the, of the model. So, uh, I think that uh, my presentation uh, touched all the themes of, for, this, uh, for this webinar. So, let's go through the, uh, the question. If there are any questions, feel free to write down. And uh, I'll try to answer it at my best. So, e there's a question about cu curved walls. Uh, no, it's not possible to model as curved, it uh, must be models uh, um, as a segment of. Uh, uh, straight uh, part uh, and uh, the segment uh, must be uh, are in relation of the uh, dimension of the measuring pier that we would like to have in our calculation so uh, in this case uh, the position of the of the opening will be the uh, uh, the part that uh, must be taken more into account to understand the dimension of the measuring piers uh, beside the these openings I don't know if there are any other questions. 
you can write them down into the question okay okay you will want like to see the, the report uh, let me see if this model uh, has a calculation I don't think so so we can open uh, the other one in the calculation it is possible to analyze arches and beams uh, as beam elements yes it is possible <coughs> you can perform uh, arches uh, inside the, uh, the software you can model it uh, as, uh, as beams uh, in the, I think uh, at the beginning of next year it will be also possible to model it as arcs but this the it's uh, let me say more graphics uh, the possibility is uh, the, the, what you have to model inside the software is uh, the opportunity of uh, um, uh, the, the behavior of the arc inside the, the model so the transmission of the loads between the two parts that uh, is uh, in, uh, connecting to and uh, the carrying of the vertical loads so this is uh, what can be modeled uh, on an arc that is uh, uh, a beam. Uh, you intend as a frame, uh, yes, as a frame as uh, columns and, uh, and beams. So you can insert uh, this kind of modeling of for for arches. Uh, if you have uh, um, mesory arcs. Uh, what can I suggest you is to perform a wall with an opening. In this way, the the arc will be uh, performed by the uh, spender uh, into the mesh. That is uh, the part that is that can be more uh, that has the uh, uh, the same behavior of an arc. Yes. Now I'm running just uh, an analysis to run the. Uh, uh, the report and let you say see how it's done the report uh, I'm sorry I haven't uh, saved also the local mechanism otherwise also this kind of report will be automatically done but we can run it one at, at once so you can see also this kind of of mechanism uh, report okay very easy one so you can see here re the report the global verification So there is an introduction. Oh, see, sorry, it's in Italian, English. Okay, we can recreate it in English. So there is a de general de description of, of the structure, the result of the pushover analysis. We have made uh, the uh, local mechanism. We don't have to perform the static, but it will be uh, automatically inserted. And these are all the uh, automatic picture taken by the software of, of, our, of our structure. Then we can add the uh, picture by ourselves with uh, the command uh, inside the uh, all the windows. So it's always possible to do a right click and then take, have a picture of the 3D view, of a pushover analysis, of our results. Uh, so you can add in all the picture that you want of the. Um, of the prospect of uh, our wall uh, inside the results uh, or uh, inside the mesh okay overview is on the other screen so it's coming Instead of 
moving from uh, from a uh, okay here it is this is the uh the rtf automatically created by the software with the plan of the of the model the 3d view to understand how it's made all the material inserted the structural elements that we have modeled level by level so all the walls uh, all the floors uh, <coughs> that we have uh, inserted this is the the mesh so the equivalent frame all the 3d nodes uh, all the 2d nodes all the spandrels uh, wall by wall are described here then there is a description of the loads that we have inserted and a combination of the loads we have used on uh, the spectrum. And then the pushover analysis, uh, a short uh, <coughs> uh, theoretical description of, of, the, uh, of the analysis performed. Uh, we have uh, now I have performed only one analysis, otherwise, we will have this, the table of all the 24 analysis, possible analysis. The, the results of the analysis we have performed. It's in yellow because it's uh, the worst one, obviously, because it's one. Then there is the, the color table to understand the damages. And this is the most damaged walls that is automatically inserted into the, uh, uh, the analysis, uh, the, the formation of the plan, the pushover curve. And this is the, uh, the local mechanism. So we have the description of one uh, kinematics. That the one I have built again. Otherwise, we will have the the list of all the kinematism we have inserted. This is the uh, uh, the report. So, uh, as the we have done for the measure for the sorry for the pushover analysis, there will be exactly the same for the static analysis because static analysis is very easy to to be performed. Oh, sorry, I have open. Okay. It's possible to model confined dimensions as such, so and now to insert the vertical confining elements. Uh, yes, it is possible to model the confined uh, elements. Uh, so I can show it to you here. It's possible to perform a confined measure. You can uh, insert directly in the mod in the model. Uh, columns and, uh, and beams. I can open this one for the reinforcement. Okay. As we have done for the reinforcement, for example, we can move to the first level and then uh, we can insert here, let's say, Columns. Uh, okay, and then you can define here. Instead of with a thyroid, with a RC beam. If we look at the 3D. We have here all the definition we have made. So the columns and uh, and beams. Uh, this this kind of modeling can be done uh, in concrete or in steel, or if you have to add something inside the uh, the walls, uh, you can add the steel frames as I showed you before. Uh, the main difference is uh, in inserting uh, uh, columns, uh, maybe also not. In this part, but you can also insert the columns, uh, let me say, here. Sorry. Yes, because I forgot to insert. So, a column.
column can be inserted also here. It's not important that it's uh, an intersection between two uh, walls. So you can recreate uh, with a beam at the top and the uh, to find the mesway. Can you show us? Okay, foundations. Uh, in Tutremuri, at the base, uh, there is a uh, uh, foundation constraint. The foundation characteristic can be inserted here as uh, the uh, dimension of the, the foundation. Into the uh, pushover calculation, the foundation is not taken into account for, because we decided to do like this, or better, like Professor Lacomarsino decided to divide the approximation of a pushover analysis and the approximation of how the uh, foundation behaves into different parts. So in the calculation here, this is the uh, reached link at the base of the soft or of the model. And this link can be also applied on other levels if you have foundation on different levels. Uh, when you have the foundation constraint selected, the eight of the panel can be changed. So it means that you can elevate the foundation from, from the base. Uh, to show you how it works, I can insert here 200. So we can see it in the 3D view. Now you will see the wall ele elevated, but not the, okay? So I can elevate only a part of, of the wall. In this way, maybe I have a different eight of the foundation in this part. So I can go through this kind of uh, modeling. And uh, after the calculation, uh, you can uh, um, do the, the project, the project of footing, uh, not in this case because I don't have the calculation, but uh, you can go through the, this, this part. I can run a static analysis, so you can see also this. Enter point in linear loads. Yes, it is possible to insert uh, loads uh, into the model as uh, distributed ones, so linear and uh, as point. Maybe I forgot to show you, but now we can go through it. So you can see also the static analysis. It's very easy to be done. So now we have to run the mesh of the board because we haven't done it before. Otherwise, once you have done it, you don't have to do it all the other way. The analysis is made. So uh, we have the model. So uh, we have the top, middle, and bottom section of every measuring pier, the verification of our distance, uh, and uh, you, we also have the verification of all, uh, all the other elements. If we have the uh, media, the beams or columns inside the uh, our model. Uh, I don't think we, yes, no, there, there are in the columns because I haven't done the mesh again. But uh, now, the, okay, so, and to run the, also the, the push analysis. Uh, you will have the possibility to see a plan of the, of the model with uh, the uh, color plan. Uh, with the stresses on the on the on the roof on the floor, sorry, uh, on the ground and uh, the displacement of the ground, and then you can calculate them, uh, exporting the values on in Excel, and then you can run the calculation, uh, uh, or you can uh, um, have it uh, in uh, inside the movie, the possibility to uh, calculate it, but uh, as a rigid beam under the floor. Uh, you have asked for the loads. This is the comments. So you can insert concentrated or linear loads. Uh, these are the combination of the load. Uh, for a concentrated, you have a single point or a point with distance. Or for a linear, uh, you can insert. The, sorry, obviously I have to insert at least a load, and then you can go through a wall or you can go through inside a, a floor if uh, maybe there is a, a, 
carry the uh, load on the uh, upper level. Development plan of Tremur in the future. Okay, um, now we are uh, performing to add to Tremuri the possibility to also consider the auto plane behavior of uh, the auto plane resistance inside the pushover analysis. Uh, there will be a new um, mesh dedicated to the uh, static analysis uh, to uh, maybe to insert uh, this connection between the walls. Uh, when uh, the uh, when uh, the, the model is not uh, so bad. The, the real structure is uh, in a worse <laughs> condition. Uh, this from the the modeling part. Uh, then uh, into uh, the software maybe uh, there will be the, also the possibility to model directly arches uh, that there will be a, a sort of beam uh, made of. Uh, a special, uh, special object, but the modeling is be exactly the same as you can see here of a beam, how to model it. Um, these are the, uh, the main uh, development that are in course now. Uh, then uh, we are developing uh, also uh, possibility to do local calculation of single beam, single columns uh, that now are available only for the Italian code, but we are extending them also to the Euro codes. So if you have to insert maybe a single column, you can also run the static calculation of it. Uh, now it's possible for the Italian code, and we are uh, enlarging it to the uh, to the Euro codes. Uh, also, the uh, footing are in, uh, we are we are enlarging it to the Euro codes the, the calculation. Not only did the plan view at told you before, but also the possibility to uh, calculate uh, uh, the, uh, the beams uh, and uh, the, the footage uh, under uh, a column. <coughs> These are the things that are in my mind now. Maybe there are others, but I don't remember <laughs> at the moment. So, uh, I think uh, analysis. Okay. What is the differences between static and linear analysis? So static analysis is only for vertical loads. Linear analysis, uh, it's a uh, seismic analysis, but uh, made only in the linear part of the behavior of the, of the, of the measuring. Um, uh, for the, so uh, in Tutemuri, we decided to, to not perform linear analysis because it's not the right way to uh, uh, um, understand the behavior of a measuring structure. Because uh, the measure material is a nonlinear material, uh, and in the plastic part of the measure, there is the major resistant part of, the, of this material. So, performing a linear analysis that is uh, an analysis that performs only on resistance and not on the displacement of, uh, of the material, it's, uh, it's just like uh, performing an analysis that allows you to understand uh, only maybe the 20%. Of the behavior of the of the analysis or the 20% of the performance of your structure. So, um, if you run a, stat, a linear analysis for uh, for uh, the uh, seismic, uh, you will oh, for sure you will have to insert uh, much more uh, in uh, stiffening of, of the structure that not always are the good way to uh, improve the behavior of the structure because you need to have um, to strengthen and to have much more stiffness in the structure, may, but uh, maybe you need much more displacement instead of stiffness to have a good behaves on, uh, under earthquakes. So, in our opinions, linear analysis is not a good way to analyze a uh, mason structure. Uh, standard member design. Uh, Okay, the, uh, it's possible to execute. I, I don't know if I understand well. Well, uh, when you run the pushover analysis, all the members in models are, uh, are uh, verified. So, from a seismic point of view, all the members we model into the software are verified. Uh, from a static point of view, uh, since the uh, yes, you can design steel members and reinforce the concrete members as well. Yes, as I showed you before, you can. Uh, you can insert a reinforced concrete 
uh, uh, columns, beams. Uh, you can insert also this kind of this wall, you can uh, be a reinforced concrete wall. Uh, but uh, Tremuri is uh, performing the analysis according to the Eurocode for Mesori. So the major part of the, the, of the model must be Mesori to be in according with the, the, uh, uh, with, the, with the code we are performing now. So Eurocode 8, 8 for Mesori and Eurocode 6 for Mesori for the static analysis. So uh, um, a model with, with only reinforced concrete can be done inside Tremuri, but it will, will not be according with the Eurocodes that the Tremuri is, uh, is uh, applying. 